Good morning, afternoon and evening to everybody on the internet. My name is Prateek and welcome to Exhibit. Today we are going to take a look at Exhibit Explains, where we explain complex technology terms in easy to understand ways. First topic of the day is Smartphone Cameras Explained. Smartphones have replaced a lot of things in our arsenal and almost everyone who desired a full-fledged camera can do a lot more with just the Pokemon in their pocket. We are going to explain what the tiny hole or holes behind your phone mean and what and how exactly does a smartphone camera work. Computational photography. It's like an autopilot functionality for your camera sensor controlled by an algorithm. You are the one selecting what to shoot but the phone camera does not just click one single picture. In fact, some phones like the Google Pixel series, the Samsung flagship series, and even the iPhone capture footage from almost all the sensors while you're taking a single photo or a video. It is the post-processing that really matters more than the number of cameras. But today's computational algorithms and processors are competent enough to use more cameras for more information and better end user content. Also, understand that this is designed by each manufacturer according to their own test conditions. Thus, a picture looks different on different phones. Also, do not be fooled by the way the photo looks on your phone display, especially when editing that image or video. The content may look different on S AMOLED versus an IPS panel and so on. Now, Gcam for Android phones is Google Pixel's open source algorithm that can enhance pictures in pixel-like image processing on most phones. Try it out by searching the internet. It will drastically improve the image quality and the image processing on your phone as well. Does size matter? Ever considered that a Redmi phone with a 108 megapixel still fails to compete against the same shot taken by a 12 megapixel iPhone camera? Does megapixel size even matter? Short answer, no. It is the algorithm that matters. And as we all have studied, the software runs better on better hardware. So the main system on chip also really, really matters. More processing power equals to better image processing and finer details retained in your content. If you're someone who enjoys color grading or post-processing, most phones also allow for raw image capture. But most of us do not like such large files, do we? Pixel binning. Pixel binning technology is when adjacent pixels are grouped together or binned together to form one single super pixel that has the information of the adjacent pixels and makes it easier to process the image faster while also improving on low light performance of your smartphone. In 2022, almost every phone does pixel binning. OIS versus EIS. OIS is optical image stabilization while EIS is electronic image stabilization. OIS shifts the lens to compensate for shaky hands or blurry focus while EIS shifts through captured images digitally to reduce the blur. Now OIS is a hardware level mechanism which involves physical moving parts on your lens while EIS is a software algorithm. Most phones without OIS do EIS processing and some phones can do both the things at the same time to improve camera performance. What is the right FPS? To be honest, there's no right FPS to shoot, but the smoothest normal time video can be shot via 60 FPS as of today. FPS is frames per second of data captured by your sensor, and the more you have while shooting the video, the better image, video, and audio data you have while post-processing. It's that simple. 4K and higher video recordings strain your phone processor and thus some phones get hot when shooting 4K videos for too long or limit 4K video recordings. Now here's a fun fact, any camera over 8 megapixel can theoretically shoot in 4K resolution. What's with the 2 megapixel depth, 5 megapixel telephoto or macro? Yes, you guessed it right. Most of these smaller cameras are a part of the overall picture algorithm and have been designed as data collection tasks. Most of our smartphone's main cameras are high resolution enough to do both telephotos by cropping the main image digitally. In the same way, most ultra-wide sensors are also easy and can double up as excellent macro cameras. Thus, when the hardware is not being used as for the primary camera, it acts as a secondary camera capturing essential data to improve the overall image quality. Most manufacturers will not tell you and that's fine with us. So now you know how exactly do smartphone cameras work. It's a blend of hardware that meets excellent software post-processing, eventually making your content look Instagram-worthy. 
Now, if you want to learn more such topics, stay tuned to our channel, subscribe and share this video with everybody who wishes to know about how exactly do smartphone cameras work. Until then, this is Prateek signing off.